this Flash and ActionScript 3 lesson that also has a free source file that goes with it, you can download from developphp.com. You'll learn how to dynamically create button instances, put them on stage through code, and using the button component. That's the first component in the user interface from the components library. And I show you how to program that, add it to stage, and program it to have toggle functionality. So you can access the toggle property of your button components and then program things accordingly. You see how it changes what it says on the button. When the clip is gone, it says show clip. When the clip is there, it says hide clip. And I thought that would be a good way to show you guys toggle the toggle functionality and tapping into the the native toggle property of the button component. And you also learn a little bit about the visibility property of display objects. Let us begin. I'm in Flash CS3 and I'm going to create new Flash Action Script 3 file. Now I'm going to create just a quick example display object. I'm going to create an oval shape there and I'm going to put some text on it. My little namey poo. Flash building! And then I'm going to put that in place there. Highlight both of the items. Convert to symbol. Movie clip. My underscore MC is name in the library. I'm going to copy that name. OK. I'm going to put that name in the instance name. Properties Inspector spot right there. My underscore MC. So now this is my display object and it has an instance name here in the properties panel. So, in order to use the component, the button component, we have to drag it to stage. Because if we start here, I'm just going to put object. This will be my object layer and this will be code. Alright, so on the code layer if I go in and I put in the first line that we need to dynamically use the button, the button component you'll see we'll get an error, I'll show you Okay, import fl.controls.button. Now watch this. I'm going to publish out by pressing control enter or I'm going to export. Definition. So we have uh definition dot fl controls button could not be found. That's because we don't have that in our library, you see here? It's only that my MC movie clip, this thing I made. So what we do is we go into the components library again, we pull out a button, put it on stage, and then just press control X and get it out of there. Now what I did is I added that to the library. See we have component assets and now the button, it's in the library. So now if I press control enter, looky there, no error. That means we can continue. Let's go. Okay, so the mission is to create a button, have it placed on stage all through code, and have it toggle the visibility of this display object here so you'll learn a little bit about the visibil visibility property of display objects and uh, but mainly we're going to be focusing on button toggle functionality the button components toggle functionality and so let's open our actions panel let's click the code layer there put what kind of code this is AS3 action script 3 and press F9 and you see we have that one line there already okay so let's code this puppy out so what we're gonna do is access and bring out a button by claiming a new button instance my button colon button equals a new button <clears throat> open close parenthesis semicolon now 
my button dot label this is what's going to be on the button itself the word on the button or the words on the button equals and if it's going to be visible at the start we should say hide clip so the user can hide the object and I thought using visibility would be the best way to show you guys the button components toggle functionality I think it's a good way to and I'm just going to show you see you can put a name on this button as well but we're not even going to name it we don't have to go that far but if you wanted a name value on it here I'll put it in I'll show you name equals btn1 btn1 now the next property will be my button dot toggle and this is how you allow the button to know that it is supposed to be a toggle button now so it acts differently and I'll show you how now one more is my button and this is where it's going to be located on stage my button dot move and you just put the x and y values in between these parentheses let's say 225 and 30 so it's in the middle near the top in a little space here okay then we just add child add child puts display object on stage or whatever object is supposed to be going on stage that you've created through code here or any object in your library now let's go and add a listener to this button which is going to be a change event okay so we access the name of the button dot add event listener this is open parenthesis close parenthesis semicolon in between the parenthesis claim the event dot change right here then the pull down if you have the code help on comma and the name of the function that's going to fire off on this change event <clears throat> okay so here we write in the function function grab that name function change handler you open close parenthesis then we type in colon void and open the bracket the curly brace let's go down here and close the function off now we have a nested function there nice ready to go oh yeah we have to put in the event there we go that way we can access certain things about the object in the event and I'll show you that right now okay so what we're gonna do is <clears throat> sorry what we're gonna do is make an if and else condition inside of this function so let's go ahead and set that up there we go now we have beautifully nested if and else condition and inside of the if condition we're gonna grab the event dot current target dot selected and that will let us know whether because it knows this button mode or this button has toggle mode set to true so it's going to know whether or not it's selected its current target is selected or not I'll show you target dot selected equals true now right here what we're saying is if the event that current target which is my button dot selected equals true which has to do with this toggle mode 
which it is going to be by default when the person comes to the application we say my underscore MC dot visible and this is how you set the visibility property to your display objects you can make them just disappear and reappear at will so what's going to happen is and actually we're going to change the name that's on the button change the label on the button so my button dot label is going to be hide clip no sorry it's already hide clip then when it comes so it's going to be show clip because it disappeared since since the object disappeared the movie clip being this guy when they click it the first time it'll disappear so we want the button to say show clip so for the next time when it reappears so let's grab that code and say else my button visible or my movie clip visible equals true and then hide clip again we want the button to say hide clip and it's as easy as it is I think we we should have a button thrown right about here that's going to say show clip and hide clip according to whether or not the clip is showing or not let's try it control enter button see I won't edit that out just to show you guys everybody messes up a little bit instead of naming writing button in my code somewhere I wrote in wrote in button on line three that's an easy fix so you go in line three button that's not cool alright now control enter see it says hide clip show clip hide clip show clip hide clip show clip you can see the button takes on a gray appearance when it's in its uh, toggle mode when it's not in toggle mode then it can uh, it just shows its regular appearance but it takes on different properties so yeah let me show you if I zap out this toggle mode or make it not have that property press control enter you see it doesn't go into toggle mode at all it's just like a regular button so that is how you can give your dynamic button components toggle functionality now let me go see what my little puppy wants outside the door here I'll have this uh, source file available free for download like most of the others at developphp.com in the flash section I just want to go ahead and throw this on the tail end here that you can instead of using all code here if you want to do a little bit manually you can go into the actually you can just go into your library and drag out the button put it where you want it give it the instance name of my button like we were using before go into the code and instead of creating the button and importing the controls we can just give it the properties we want we don't have to add child either because the child is added manually by us by what we just did but everything else should be just fine so this is more of a manual method you see it says label right now but that will change because of the properties we give it oh, I got an error Oh, it's because I tried to change the name property and it's not a dynamic item anymore. See, you got to read your errors. I'm not going to edit that out either. That that will teach you guys to read your errors well <laughs> because it just showed me what I had to remove from my code that was causing the error. But now you can see manually everything works the same. And here's a PSPS. Let's break it down some more let's see label let's get rid of that toggle let's get rid of that and we didn't need that in the first place look at that let's slim it down okay now we have my button now let's put those parameters back in that we just took out 
Well, let's do it manually here. Toggle, true. Label, hide clip. And that's it. Now, control enter. See there? Breaking it down for you, breaking it down. So that should give you a pretty good full understanding of how the button component works. Well, not complete, but a good start on it anyway.